Hey nerds, Bevan here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, as you can tell by the title of this video, I got some new comic books. This giant stack of comics is like 95% X-Men, because who doesn't love the X-Men? Uh, and then a couple other little tidbits in here. And I figured I'd go through it with you because I don't have much else to talk about. I wanted to put out some content for you guys. And also I like comic books. Uh, so this stack came from a local trade. It was obviously a big trade. I had some big items in it. I got some ton of comic books. Uh, and we both came out happy. So it all worked out for everyone. Before I reveal what is in this pile. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, so you can check out all of my comic and toy related videos. It's pretty early in the morning, so I got my coffee here. Ah, a little too hot still. Well, um, so that's it for another couple minutes. Okay, let's get into it. Enough chit chat. It's been a minute and a half already. And you're like, where's the books? Here's the first book. Spider Gwen, number 25, lenticular cover. Oh, it works way better on camera than I could make it look. Get to myself. So there's the Spider Gwen cover, paralleled with this awesome Venom cover. I bought the book, so like, ooh, that's cool. Uh, I don't really like it that much, actually. I, I may not keep it for whatever reason. Um, but the actual cover of the book, of issue 25, is freaking sweet, and I want that. Issue 25, of course, is part two of the Gwenum uh, story arc in Spider Gwen. Um, so yeah, I have the lenticular cover. I may or may not keep it because I don't really like it because I can't see the actual spider web cover well enough to warrant keeping this in the collection. So I might try to trade this for just like the standard version. So that's the newest book in the pile. But the oldest book in the pile is this Batman number uh, 215. I looked it up. It's from 1969. It's as old as my mom. Uh, but the cover is really cool. It's actually in really good shape. I think I only paid, I think the value of it was like five bucks or something, maybe 10. Um, but other than this corner here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like some creases right there. And it's got a big dent mark in it. But other than that, like the corners are pretty good and the spine has a few ticks, but like this book is over 50 years old. I don't expect it to be pristine, but it's in really good shape. The oldest comic book, this is the oldest Batman book I own. The oldest comic book I own is this, uh, X-Men 41? 41. And it is beat to shit. Like, it's missing some of the cover there. Uh, it's got a huge crease down the middle. This is only a year older. So, like, this is what I expect out of a 50-year-old book. This is not. This is in much better shape than I thought it would be. So, those are the two non-X-Men books, which means this is all X-Men. So I had originally started collecting Uncanny X-Men I wanted five to five, five sorry, 500 to 534, because that is the uh, Matt Fraction run, which is what I was reading when I broke into comic books in 2008. So that's like my favorite era of X-Men, so I just wanted that run and Spider-Gwen. But then it went from like 500, well, I might as well just like get to the 544, which is like the end of Uncanny X-Men Volume 1. And then I got a couple cool covers, and I... I think this kind of sparked the whole thing, actually. This was a $5 book. It's 53 years old, I think, 52 or 53 years old. Um, I was like, oh, that's hella cool. And like, yeah, it's beat up and not, like not in good condition at all in any way. But this book has a history to it. It's not, a, it's not an important X-Men book, but like, it's freaking cool. And I was like, ooh, if I don't really care about condition, I can get a whole bunch of old X-Men comic books. That's a dangerous slope. Uh, so now I'm going for X-Men, uh, all of them. Every single uncanny X-Men book is what I'm going for. I don't know if we'll ever get there because X-Men 1 obviously is like whatever, $10,000 or whatever it costs. Uh, but maybe one day, who knows? That, I'm not close to completing the collection, but, but I am a lot closer. And none of these are important books, so we're just gonna fly through them here. We have Uncanny X-Men 362, 
I like this kind of cool cover art. It feels very 90s to me. I have no idea what year this came out in, though. X-Men 370. Uh, this is Uncanny X-Men 376, and it's a really cool cover with... I know him as Warpath from the X-Force comics. I don't know if he went by, if he's still Thunderbird here, or if he's Warpath. I have no idea, but this cover's awesome. This is a second printing variant of uh, Uncanny X-Men 495. 495 to 499 is an arc. It, they're put together in a graphic novel, but it's not really like an ongoing arc. But it has some of my favorite X Men art because it's from uh, Choi and Obak. Those are the names down there. They also did a lot of work on the X Force in 2008 when I broke into comics. Um, so, like these few issues, I have a great love for. 495, 496, 497. This is a weird heavy cover. It, like, it doesn't make any sense, but it's awesome. 498 with a really cool Wolverine cover on it. Uh, and then X-Men 499 with uh, Cyclops and Emma Frost. So I had mentioned earlier I wanted X-Men 500 to 534 uh, because that's the matter fraction. But then 35, 535 to 544 is Karen Gillan, and I have the majority of her run right here as well. So X-Men 535. Uncanny X-Men. 536, Uncanny X-Men, 537 with a cool Kitty Pride cover, 538, another cool Wolverine cover because he gets all the cool covers, uh, 539, and then to almost end it out, there's a really cool comic series, uh, Fear Itself, that Marvel did, and uh, we have three of the four issues here, we have 40, 41, and 43 with some really cool cover art there, um, 42. That's on my list. I need that one. Uh, and then I'll have, and then I'll just need 544. And that'll be the end of the comic book run. Another book I'm probably not going to keep, but has some pretty cool cover art. This is the 1998 annual Uncanny X-Men and Fantastic Four. You see Beast and Wolverine versus The Thing and Mr. Fantastic. I don't need the annuals. That's just another rabbit hole I don't need to fall down. That's why I probably won't keep this. But I'll read it. It looks pretty cool. The cat was causing too much damage in the hallway, so now she's in here with me. Oh, the sun's starting to come up. That's nice. Anyway, uh, if you don't know, and probably most of you don't, because I don't talk about this a whole lot with people, my favorite X-Men, sorry, my favorite comic book artist is Jim Lee. I love his run on Hush, Batman Hush. I love his X-Men stuff. It, uh, what, what's the word, inspired the X-Men animated series. So, like, it, it, it means a lot to me. And I wanted his X-Men run. So what we have here is his, his initial run on the X-Men series. Uh, not Uncanny X-Men. I will collect those, obviously. But this is, like, his Uncanny run was so popular. They're like, here, have another X-Men comic and just, like, Brigand, do you. So yeah, they said, Jim Lee, go do another X-Men book. We'll take care of Uncanny. You go do your own thing. So he started off with this, and I plan to read this, but I didn't probably sell it. Uh, but issue number one, the highest selling comic book in the history of comic books. Eight million copies sold, but for sure, because he did four covers, that all interconnect, and I'll see if I can get them to show this is as best as I can do so it's got Magneto versus the X-Men Cyclops Wolverine Beast Storm Jean Grey Professor X Colossus Psylocke Rogue and Gambit oh yeah like that's freaking sweet and like look at this art this is one of my favorite comic book covers of all time I love this book I love it so much so that's just issue one I also got Issue two, awesome Magneto. Issue three, Colossus is going crazy. Issue four, first appearance of Omega Red with again, an awesome frickin' cover. Like this is why Jim Lee is a boss bitch. Issue five, Wolverine versus Omega Red. Like I can't get over this amazing cover art. And number six here, Psylocke and Sabretooth. Uh, number seven here, more Wolverine and Omega Red. Like again, this cover art is on 
fucking real. Issue 8, it says, Bishop versus Gambit, enough said, right there. No, that says, Special Appearance of Ghost Rider. Bishop versus Gambit, enough said. I knew it was on there, I just didn't know where. Issue 9, Wolverine versus Ghost Rider. Jim Lee, again, just freaking killing it on the cover art here. Uh, issue 10, this is Because You Demanded It, The Return of Longshot, which doesn't mean a lot to me, but if you read X-Men comics, I guess it does. And then the final Jim Lee issue of this book, issue 11, another one of my favorite comic book covers of all time, right there. Uh, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, the stack of comic books I got last night. So some of the standout ones to me, X-Men 11, which I actually already own, so now I have a double of it. Um, this, I don't really care about Omega Red, but this cover is amazing to me. The fact that it's the first appearance of Omega Red is better, um, but like, I just love Gambit and Jubilee and Wolverine, some of my favorite X-Men characters from when I was a kid. Uh, what else we got in here? Well, obviously this one. I already owned it though, so now I got a double of that one too. Let's see, what else is a standout to me here? Colossus as Juggernaut with the power of whatever was in fear itself, I forget. Uh, going through, going through. This Wolverine cover is pretty dope too. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see. Lots of good stuff in here actually. I'm pretty pumped. This Wolverine. Wolverine gets the best covers. Like Wolverine is not my favorite X-Men, Cyclops is, but Wolverine was when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, he just gets so much love. This Warpath cover is amazing too. And I think that's probably gonna round it out for the standouts. This Batman is just cool because it's so fucking old. Anyway guys, comic books is how I'm keeping sane during this whole COVID thing. Uh, so comment below, let me know how you're doing. I wanna make sure the people watching here are doing okay. If I was able to distract you for a few minutes here today, then I'm happy to have done so. But let me know how you're doing. Uh, like the video if you liked it, I guess. If you really liked it and you haven't already, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Bevan Boychuk. And until next time, folks. I'll see you next time, folks.